So last week we got confirmation on Nikon's Z mount cameras or Z mount cameras for the mirrorless system. Uh, and this week it seems like we're getting rumors about Canon's full frame mirrorless system as well. It's only rumors at the moment. So all the information I'm about to share with you is just literally stuff that I've looked on, on actually, um, what was it, canonrumors.com? Is it dot com? Yeah, dot com. So you can actually just go on there, the link's are in the description below, go on there, have a good look around. There's quite a lot of information, but I'm gonna give you the most important bits, what I think is the most important bits. So it's not gonna be super techy or anything like that. These are gonna be the bits that I think are gonna be the most relevant for you guys. So don't forget, definitely have a look at the links below, but let's dive in. So Canon's attempt at a full frame mirrorless camera system is simply codenamed R at the moment. That's that's all the information we have, it's it's R. I mean, are you freaking kidding me? Is that the only name you can come up with? I don't know. Maybe it's a really, really good camera. So let's give it a bit of a benefit of the doubt for the moment at least. It's a 30 megapixel CMOS sensor. So basically a, like a 5D Mark IV, which is absolutely fine. That's more than enough megapixels for most scenarios. Certainly for myself as a wedding photographer, that's absolutely fine. Uh, you can probably go into crop modes in there as well, similar to the 5D Mark IV. At least I'm assuming you can. There might be something in the tech specs that I missed on that, but Canon is actually well known for actually giving you a medium raw to a small raw, et cetera, et cetera. So that should be absolutely fine. The camera's meant to shoot up to eight frames per second, so in most shooting scenarios, that should be enough for just about anybody, really. Unless you're actually shooting high-end sports or something that's really, really fast-paced. So eight frames a second, for me personally, is never a deal breaker. And I've never found a scenario that I actually need to shoot more than, say, five frames a second. Myself, obviously your shooting requirements are gonna be very, very different, but eight frames a second, that seems pretty fine, actually. In terms of video, it's reported that it shoots 4K at 30 frames a second and 1080p up to 60 frames a second. So nothing too bad. It's pretty much in line with what most cameras are doing at the moment. So if you do want something a little bit faster, so 100 frames a second, 120 frames a second, this potentially isn't gonna be the camera for you, but for everything else, it should record absolutely fine. The dual pixel autofocus is reportedly to be back, which I found to be fantastic on the 5D Mark IV. So I see no reason for it not to be as good, basically, on this new R mount system. But again, wait for the actual camera to be rolled out and people to actually be testing it in live kind of scenarios to actually make a full judgment on that. But if it's anything like the 5D Mark IV, it should be really, really good. Again, watch this space. So lens mount, this is quite an interesting one because they're bringing out a whole new lens lineup or mount system. So we're going from the EF mount or EFS mount, if you want to go for the crop sensors, um, over to the RF mount. Now there will be adapters or an adapter basically to attach your old Canon lenses, which is brilliant. However, if you've got the M mount glass for their M50, M5 line of cameras, Apparently you won't be able to adapt them. I don't know, again, this is just something I read on the, uh, was it the PDF document that's attached to the page, but apparently you can't attach those lenses. It looks like that Canon is basically abandoning that whole system. I mean, to be fair, how many lenses have they brought out for that system? It's pretty much, what, five, six lenses in the entire time that system has been out. So it looks like they're just, they're just killing it off, which, I kind of had a feeling about anyway. But yeah, a new lens mount system, the RF mount, that you will be able to have an adapter and put your existing glass on there. I think there's a slight crop when you go into EFS, which is absolutely fine because they're crop sensor lenses anyway, and that kind of makes sense. But otherwise, yeah, it looks quite good. It's pretty much in line with what Nikon's doing as well with the Z mount system, or what uh, you get on the uh, Sony glass as well, on the Sony system, sorry. Um, so yeah, adapters, they're all the rage at the moment. So, But it's nice to see that you can actually bring your old lenses across. How well they work? It's you know it's debatable or will be debatable. They look like they work quite well on the M system, so I've got no doubt they'll work quite nicely on this new RF system or R, R mount system. But again, we'll have to wait for some uh, real world reviews to actually see this in basically live. So this is quite an interesting one. Apparently you can use your old, what's it, what are these bloody called? The um, LP E6N batteries. Apparently 
you can still use these basically. So if you've got a bunch of these laying around for you know, pretty much every Canon camera apart from the 1D series at the moment, then you can use them, which is actually a really, really good thing. I believe actually Nikon did this as well, so kudos to Nikon, I'm not going to knock them for that. But apparently, yeah, you can still use these. Um, again, this is just going off the PDF document, but that's a great sign. I really like that, so you don't have to buy new batteries. Um, that's, that's definitely a really, really good positive note. So thanks, Canon. That's, that's a really good thing. Okay, so let's have a look at some more juicy bits. And this one kind of boggles the mind. Apparently, on the autofocus side of things, there is going to be 5,655 autofocus points. Yeah, you heard that right. 5,655 autofocus points. That's quite astonishing, really. Um, how are you going to be able to choose all those between all those focus points is is just I don't know um, because on the back of the camera it doesn't look like there's a joystick or anything like that so are you just going to use your thumb or something like that I, I can't say um, it's a pain in the butt sometimes if you've got two three hundred focus points to choose from on something like the Olympus which I'm focus uh, sorry which I'm filming with at the moment but to choose from over five and a half thousand also focus points. Ooh, I don't know, it's going to be quite interesting to see how that system works. Something really interesting with the autofocusing as well is it says it's got face recognition or face autofocus, but no eye autofocus, which is really popular on the Sonys. Um, I would have thought with that many autofocus points, they would have got this because you know you're talking about very very small autofocus points especially if you got over five and a half thousand autofocus points so be able to pick out an eye it should be relatively easy in theory anyway so i'm not really sure what canon's doing there um but that could be a big oversight. It's, I mean, it's something I love on my Sony cameras. Um, it's it's a brilliant thing, and for shooting people like weddings, like I do, that's my bread and butter. It's it's a real game changer. It's absolutely fantastic. Having face autofocus is really good, and again, it works really well in live view on the 5D Mark IV. So I'm I'm guessing it works really well on this new camera. But again no eye autofocus again nikon doesn't have this either so it's in line with nikon but you'd think they'd have it by now i mean come on they they've had a few years to work this out so the part everybody wants to know about and me included and to be honest there's no definitive answer on this um looking for the information that is online it doesn't say whether it is dual card slots or not it does say cards but it doesn't really say whether that's just the type of cards because it's sd cards and everything aligned with those um so i don't know at the moment but looking closely at the image of the back of the camera you can see a small door for the memory card or cards so i don't know if they're lined next to each other so you don't need a huge memory card slot or door i'm guessing it's single card slot though um but i could be very wrong on this hopefully it's dual cards please be dual cards because anybody that's a professional it doesn't matter how much canon tells us or nikon tells us that those cards are safe if there's a one percent chance that they could fail that is a hundred percent too much of a chance you know professionals will not buy for professional work a camera basically with just one card slot which means this will camera be solely for basically consumers people with decent amount of money that can afford to buy whatever they want that's who this camera will be for which is a real shame i'd like to see canon have that dual card slot i mean i really hope they have got it so you know my fingers are really crossed um because if they do it could be a camera i look into for buy for myself for professional work but we're gonna to have to wait a little bit. I really hope they have got it. Looking on the back of the camera as well, there's looks like a, um, a flip out screen, like something you'd find on the Olympus or um, a Fuji or Panasonic, etc. So for perfect for vloggers, you know, when you hold the camera up here, you're recording yourself, etc. You can see exactly what you're doing. I've got it on the actually on the camera right now because uh, I'm recording again on the Olympus. I'm going to flip the screen now. I can see see my ugly mush. Um, so yeah, it's good to see that this camera's got it as well. It's the same on the 6D Mark II. So was it the 200D or whatever it was. Um, so it's good to see Canon actually implement it because I know a lot of people are going to want this. With the screen as well, it's meant to be touchscreen, which is in line with a lot of the new cameras that Canon are doing. And Canon actually do a really good touchscreen. So I've got no doubts it'd be really, really good. It's way better than the Sony. Sony, 
is shit if I'm honest. Um, so yeah, that's definitely gonna be a plus for the Canon. So it's something I'm gonna be very much looking into. Looks like Canon's taken the page out of Nikon's book who actually stole something from Fuji, the X-H1, and that's having the little LCD screen on top of the camera for all the basic shooting information, which is absolutely fine. It looks like it's gonna be the standard from now on. So well done Fuji for doing that. Sony, we don't have it basically. I am a predominantly a Sony shooter now. Um, so Sony doesn't have it, but it looks like uh, Nikon, Canon, Fuji, etc., etc., will have it. Um, so that's brilliant for those. Um, otherwise, it looks quite good. So those are the big kind of selling points, or at least I think are the big selling points. There's obviously a lot more tech information on the website, so please go and have a look. But those are the kind of points that I personally look into for basically when I'm looking for buying a camera. So I don't know, maybe there's more information that you want to have a look at, so please do have a look. Another thing, um, because it's a new camera system, obviously Canon's gonna have to release some lenses and they've got, what I can see is four lenses coming out. They look quite interesting, so just bear with me, I'm gonna read off my little list here. This is, it's a, it's a wonderful list. So they've got a zoom lens, which is a 28 to 70, but an F2, so, that looks quite interesting, an f2 zoom lens. That's quite cool, I like do like the look of that, that looks quite cool. There's a 50 1.2, so an update to their legendary, you know, 50 mil, that's, that could be a quite nice lens. Um, there's a 35 1.8, sounds pretty good, I like the look of that. And a pretty standard 24 to 105 f4 zoom. So, four lenses, four respectable lenses you might say. The 28 to 70 sounds a bit weird, especially f2, how good that will be, we don't know yet. We've got no sample pictures from any of the lenses, so they could all be really, really good lenses, or they could all be trash. We just don't know at this point in time. So again, we're gonna have to just wait to get some more information on those, but fingers crossed again, I really hope this camera's gonna be good. So is this a camera you're potentially looking forward to? Is it the kind of information, I don't know, you, you wanna see in the Canon camera? It's kind of got me really kind of interested. I really hope it's got dual card slots. That's my big thing. It's gonna be a big selling point for a lot of people as well. If it's got dual card slots, a lot of the other bits and pieces, we can accept. It might not be a camera for professional use. We're gonna to have to wait and see. Uh, but dual card slot is an absolute must. Even even my Olympus has got dual card slots. A Panasonic's have got them now. Fuji's have got, everybody's bloody got them apart from the two big main people, Nikon and Canon at the moment. Well, Canon, we still gotta wait for. Uh, anyway, uh, let me know your thoughts and feelings about this information. And do, like I keep saying, check out the information on the links below. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you next time.